Let me show you how I turn this I don't wanna care. into this. I don't wanna care anymore. What's poppin' gangy? My name is Keenan, and I'm gonna be starting this new video series called So You Wanna Be A Pop Star, where I show you how I can help turn your musical vision into a reality. So today we've got a different brief than the last couple of videos here. Just a reminder, if you haven't seen the last two episodes, the first one there was a uh, brief. It was uh, not too too heavy in the write-up, but you know, still was uh, containing a lot of information there about what the deal with how to write the song. And importantly, it had melody ideas already. So we were basing that song off of those voice memos that our sample client, Anna Campbell, had sent us. The second episode, we had a very, very detailed one. No melody ideas, but we had references, uh, but very detailed exactly like what the sample client wanted to talk about. For this one, we've got a little bit of a different story here, a lot more vague of a write-up here. Anna Campbell's coming back at us with something a little bit simpler. So she gave us some reference tracks alongside this brief. You can check out the timestamps on the play bar or in the description below to skip ahead to the music production stages you're looking for. Why don't we take a little bit of time to just check out the brief. She says she wants this song to be all about being your true, authentic self, not caring what other people think. I feel like people expect me and women in general to be perfect all the time. I'm sick of it. I want to be able to be unapologetically myself, no matter what that looks like, because it's going to look different for everyone. I don't want to be put in a box. There you go. Even though it's short, there's a lot that we can draw from that. I think this turned out to be a good one. You can listen to the final product in the link in the description or this card up here but you'll see how it unfolds as the video goes on. Let's start by talking about the songwriting. How did I approach the songwriting? So I use a little bit of a technique here. Called, uh, I don't know exactly what it's called, but you use like three boxes to create three different verses. I'm gonna show a little bit of a picture of the box graph that I used. Forgive the MS Paint kind of look there, but I didn't want to spend too much time on it. I just needed to get it out there. So that first one, my idea was like sort of lights are on me. Usually when you do this box technique, it's like usually that's that last line is the refrain. But for me, it's more just like more of like a theme that I'm gonna stick to. So that first one lights are on me. So it's a smaller box at the top, so it's not gonna be too too deep. But that second box, which represents the second verse, it's sort of extrapolating upon that so that's why it's gonna be bigger and this one I've written I'm not perfect but I don't want to be and then that last box there for that final final verse there that is in the song I wrote I'm sick of the perfection so that's like uh, sort of branching out on those last two boxes there so let's take a look at what I actually wrote verse one I decided I had the line in my head when I wrote lights are on me I was like mm, blinded by lights I mean that's a, that's a, there's a lot of imagery in there, although it is, I would admit it's a little cliche, but from throughout this whole song, I'm trying to do this, this metaphor of like living through life with so many expectations is almost like you're trying to be an actor or an actress in a show, like a play, television show. So that was sort of like my, my analogy as I was kind of like writing through the whole thing, especially the verses doesn't really happen in any of the other sections, but the verses are, they sort of do have this message of how expectations of society are like roles we have to play as if we were actors. Something like Limelight by Rush, similar theme. Next verse, I kind of go into that. I'm not perfect, but I don't want to be. It's more just like how we all really feel. You know, some, some days you just don't want to get out of bed. You know what I mean? And people around us are telling us like, hey, you gotta, you know, I don't care. You know, I don't care that you're, you're going through something right now. It's it's not real, you know, then that's that's something that I think many of us can resonate with. This song is really just a, a protest against that. If you want to think about it that way in the pre-chorus here. Right. So when I wrote uh, this song, I did come up with melodies first. I had this this um, cool little progression that I came up with and I was trying to think of a nice melody that fit along with it. And then that melody sort of dictated what the flow of the words would be. So that first line. Na, 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 right? I added the words on top of that little flow. Expectations are a mystery. Kind of doing a little bit of what I call. I found this on the web. Shush up. Doing a little bit of the sequence in the melody there that goes up, and then I I, I had this I had this really cool idea to, to end the pre-chorus a little bit, not on like make it not square. 
and I really like that. Yeah, I, I like how it came out because it just kind of like breaks up that 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 expectation, which is now that I'm saying it out loud, that's kind of that's kind of deep. That's what is that word painting? Is that what we call it in, in music or whatever? That, yeah, and just you know breaking up that expectation there. I'm patting myself on the back for that one. I didn't even realize that. That's crazy. Anyway, that takes us right in that chorus right after that little and it makes me sick drop out there. I don't want to care down on the chorus there. And this is really where I'm trying to get, you know, this is where that super disco-y kind of thing kind of comes in. And, and, you know, I'm thinking this time here, you know, I got a, what's a good chorus that's not wordy, simple melody, right? Simple melody, something that is like very easy to kind of like, if you heard it on the radio, you'd be able to sing along with it. And like, you just would be able to memorize like what the flow is. So it's, it's not going to be something that you forget after hearing it, you know? That's what I'm trying to think of here. So that chorus was just like, if, I, if we're going back to the brief, I'm, I'm, I'm really leaning into that. I don't want to be put on a box thing. I want to be your true self and not caring what other people think. That's really where that's sort of the main idea of this song. I want that. The main idea of the song has to be in the chorus, right? This chorus is straight up saying like, I don't want to care anymore. I'm too busy working what I got. They can't box me in anymore. I ain't going to be someone that I'm not. And actually, fun fact, when I hear like really great feedback and, and sort of ideas from my client, I mean, I was, I was speaking to this fictional client, Anna Campbell. She actually suggested to change that second line. It was originally something else, but she said oh, by accident, like, I'm too busy working when I got. And I was like, that's a little bit of a better line. I mean, I'm taking that. Yeah, that's going to be in the song. Let's work together on, on these lyrics. Yeah, it's not it's not just me who's going to be writing it. I mean, if you're going to you got some ideas, let's. Let's do it. Anyway, going in the post-chorus. Now, the reason I put a post-chorus in here, and instead of just going from the chorus right back into the, in the verse, is just that I feel like you this this needs a hook part, a hooky part, you know. And by that I mean like the sort of like section that is anthemic part, the the earworm, and that's what I was trying to at least go for in this post-chorus. I don't know if it succeeded, but let me know. The name of the song is "I'm Gonna Be Me." Right or gonna be me, but this is that part of the song that's gonna be like gonna I'm gonna be me, uh, I'm gonna be, and then you know at the first time around, I mean the the words are just in between hits and the instrumental. Don't, um, um, it's almost like a trading kind of thing there. Eh? Not gonna be saying sorry is sort of that like just like being unapologetically myself thing. That's where I got that from from the brief verse three again we're coming full circle back to that stage analogy of like you know trying to fulfill expectations this is like playing a part that you just don't want to do and you're like pretending again that's like very it's very real to a lot of us and besides that i mean that those were the song that, that's the song in terms of like just what like the pure words i mean that's what a song is like the song is the words it's not the melodies and stuff that's the tune yeah let's move on Let's get a little bit into the production. So this song, before I even like start putting in anything, I mean, when I was like sort of rating the song with the guitar and my voice, because they gave me the references. And as always, let me know if you can suss out what the references are. I'd love to know if I either sound like a blatant copycat or I was successful in like just capturing a vibe. That's the point of the references, by the way. It's just capture the vibe. I mean, I'm not trying to rip anybody off for the most part. What is that Stravinsky saying? Stealing his art or whatever? Steal like an artist? No, that's Austin Kleon. No, what is it? Good artists borrow, great artists steal. I don't I have no idea if that's a misattribution, mis, misattribute, mis, misattribution. How do you say that word? Misattribution? That'd be a terrible last name. So I wanted to get the disco vibe. Funky, disco, groovy, four on the floor, in the pocket. I mean, that's really just all about the name of the game for this one, right? So my instrumentation was going to be very clear on this one. I had written down that we need drums, solid drums, because that's good. for this song, it's going to be the backbone because of, of how like four on the floor it is, right? Some auxiliary percussion we're going to throw in there, some tambourines, sh um, shakers, congas. Bass guitar. In this song, there is real bass guitar. I played it myself on uh, this old thing. I'm holding it upside down, but my baby. The newest bass in the guitar family. I love how that thing sounds. It's so like, so like, Mm, you know, I don't know how to describe it besides it being here, very na like nasal in the best way possible. It's like ringy too, Con almost like kind of like a rick. You got some electric guitar in there. You hear the, the beginning of the song, you hear it right off the bat, some Paul Jackson Jr. 
type stuff, some Nile Rogers type stuff. Like as we get further into the song, get some more of that strummy neck pickup action. Since it's very important to have since, especially in like modern dance music production. Although I will say in this one, it's not super synth heavy. There are for sure synths, like I wouldn't call them pads, but they're playing, they're definitely like a, like a saw type thing playing chords. And there's like a percussive glidey synth that's playing chords on, on, on the top as well. Disco strings, super, super important for capturing that nostalgic kind of sound. What I mean by disco strings is like slidey, like lots of falls, runs, and it basically is acting as a counter line. I mean, that's how do you write for disco strings is, is their counter lines. They're not very like big counter lines. Speaking of counter lines, we'll get into a little bit of the arranging aspect of it in a bit, but the counter lines in this song, there's a lot. I would urge you to like point point them out. And finally, we've got electric piano. We can hear it right at the top to Rhodes playing just like the, the chords. And it's this is the one dictating sort of the harmonic rhythm of the tune. Oh, it's the one sort of like leading the bump, bump, bump. Mm -mm -mm -mm, right? and all that. Now, let's get a little bit into the flow here. I got a little bit of a short, it's a short intro. I didn't want it to like sit on it for too long. And then right into the, the verse, something a little bit like, you know, straightforward. Mm -hmm. Uh, what is that sort of like a your typical disco kind of verse there right and then you get into the pre-chorus there where a bunch of instruments drop right back into that chorus which is super funky with the bass syncopated 16th note groove super syncopated 16th groove is of course mir mirroring a little bit of what the, the vocal rhythm is there i don't want to care and that care comes in on the uh, uh of of beat four and you know when we're talking production wise we really want like this, this, this section to be that pump, right? We got here is where the four and the four stuff is really kicking in here. Dun, 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 like real head bobber kind of thing, right? And for that, that post chorus part, this first part is it's kind of a little bit of a, a soul kind of approach. Well, we got that sort of like the roads playing on the quarters, right? Right, and all, and all that action there. Go right into the second verse, which is my, one of my favorite parts of this whole song. The second verse, Cool, cool counter line there. The beginning part was like, mm, I'm singing this news. Da, 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 da. I forget what the exact pitches are, but there's a line there. Like, da, 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 da. Played by the guitar. It's, you know, I took that a little, I, could, I was hearing that a little bit from the um, the reference track that they sent me, but it's just uh, absolutely idiomatic of, of this style of music. Pre chorus once again. This cool little part here, the pre chorus here, even when in this, it was in the songwriting phase, I had this idea when I came to the pre chorus of that, and it makes me sick. And then just like really emphasizing that sick part, ugh, with a huge sound of an ugh. In that final version you're here, it's a, mostly me. But really the big part that I wanted to throw it was like the flexitone like because it's so I, I love that sound especially in in, in in dance music i mean and in music in general just because it adds like it's not so much tongue-in-cheek as it is just like comic you know and i love comic elements and in, in music so much because the music tells a story and if the song is lighthearted, you know, really lean into the fun. The message of the song is serious, but if we were talking the production and the production, it's like not silly, but like very, very lighthearted. I mean, like we, just, we gotta throw in some fun in there, you know? We got that, that chorus once again, the second one, and then that post chorus comes back in, but a little bit more, you know, we still, we got the backbeat in there. Kick drum is way more open. It's not really kind of doing any, it's not really doing anything besides like highlighting where that those hits are da, da, uh, 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 and all that right we kind of are building up to that final final chorus which is you know the sort of party section here right the very very end full instrumentation like all the guitars are active all the strings are active all the everything is is activated there and then finally repeating that one more time with with a post chorus line overlaid on top of that that chorus there which i you know for me i had that idea and i was like that's gonna be really really cool i had that idea while i was even producing it you know after we had already like sort of recorded the vocals there and lo and behold by i think it's by sheer luck but i might have been thinking about this so i'm secretly a genius up here if you didn't know you know the i'm gonna be me stuff is like right in between the lines of the chorus i don't don't wanna care I'm gonna be me anymore I'm gonna be me e -e. Uh, like that I, I didn't realize that but that's that's really cool that they're sort of like bouncing off of each other it gives it that sort of like partiness 
right? So that's a good word, partiness. Anyway, that's the production there. I mean, other than that, we, I mean, we just got sort of their typical uh, pop production stuff, side chaining to the kick, everything side chaining to the kick, just double tracked vocals too on the chorus, and yeah, nice thick sound there. Yeah, nice funky. All right, let's move on to the demos. So if you've seen the last couple of videos, uh, a lot of this will be just me repeating myself. But right after after the production, you know, send that off to you as the client. I mean, the first thing that we're going to be doing is just like, you listen to it. But before you listen to it, actually, right after we do the production, I'll track a demo of me like singing it, flexing my, my vocal chops. I'm not an amazing singer, but I can, I can hold a tune. I'll send you that demo with my demo vocals on there. Uh, and we can go back and forth as to any revisions that you might have regarding the production of the song, whether it's like the form of the song, like maybe you should, we should move verse three somewhere else or maybe add a bridge, that kind of thing. That's where we can like really revise that. After we do that, we once you decide that, hey, this demo is good. I think this is how I want the song to be. That's where we, you're, we're going to talk about getting your vocals down on that recording. Assuming you're the client, of course. Now, in terms of recording, what are the logistics of that? Well, again, if you saw the last couple of videos, I'll, be, I'll sound like a broken record, but we're going to have three different options here. The first one is going to be if you have your own equipment, your own kind of recording, vocal recording setup. I mean, the first thing that I would suggest is, hey, if you have your own stuff, uh, you can probably record yourself however you like. And just recording yourself by getting some good takes for you, of yourself that you're happy with and sending that off to me. That option is going to be the easiest for, the bo for both the parties here. The second option would be if you're local to the Philly area, you can come on down to my home studio here in the, uh, the greater Philadelphia area. I live in New Jersey, by the way, but outskirts of Philly. So you can come here, track your vocals. It'll take about a day and then we'll call it done. Third option is, for example, if you're a client who is located outside of my area, I can help you locate a studio nearby as well as an engineer who will be able to record you. I guess going back to that first one, that first option where you record your own material, I can also just instruct you on like what equipment to get and uh, walk you through the process as you're recording yourself and give you a little bit of a tutorial, if you will, of on doing that. A couple different options there, but we'll talk about it in our call by the time we get to that stage. On to mixing and mastering there. So I get your tracks, I load them into my DAW, and I mix them, right? That's what this final mixing and mastering stage is. Really, we'll start, we'll start with the final mixing here, right? So I'm just gonna like get the balances of all the instruments, vocal chain kind of mixed real nicely. What I use is for my for the vocal chain that I that I personally use is first of all I use like RX9 to kind of clean it up, remove some background noise. I use a, a Neve preamp emulator to kind of get a little bit more warmth. Compressor, deesser, channel EQ, and OTT. That's sort of like a little bit of the secret sauce there to get a little bit more life into the, the vocals. I don't try to drive it too much, uh, but I just bring enough in to get a little bit of the granularity of the voice. This is also where I'll tune your vocals here. We don't have to tune your vocals if you as the client are not comfortable with that, and that's totally fine. But I usually tune vocals just because it is sort of the industry standard here. You'll be hard pressed to find anybody on, on the charts who doesn't use at least Melodyne to like kind of tune their tune their voice a little bit and now i'm not saying like auto-tune that's a wholly different uh I'm, I'm saying just like tuning your voice to so that it's like perfectly in tune and i mean that's kind of like what people are doing these days i could count on my hands the amount of people who are recording and leaving it untuned after all that makes a good in the master stage so in mastering our task is to prepare this the song the recording the mix for release Right. So really what I'm doing is just making it loud, cutting out any like resonances that might have occurred as a result of all the uh, tracks combining together. For my master channel, I use a, a collection of different tools to master the track. I use Ozone to do a little bit of dynamic EQs as well as for, for um, just like more broad sweeping EQs. I'll use nonlinear sum bus from, from Waves to get a little bit of that nonlinear sum kind of sound. I'll put a tape emulator, virtual tape machines from Slate, to add a little bit more saturation and warmth to the overall mix. And I'll throw in SSL native bus compressor as 
sort of the mix glue compressor at the very end. It's not going to do anything crazy, it's just going to be making the music sort of gel together a little bit better. And to round it all off, I've got L2 Ultra Maximizer as my, my loudness sort of plug-in. That's my maximizer slash limiter of choice, but of, of course that's not the only one I have access to. I of course you can sometimes use the Ozone Maximizer, but for me it's just L2 has a certain sound about it that I just really like. So here we are. Why don't we kind of take a listen to what I've been talking about this entire time. Let's say we listen to the snippet of Gonna Be Me, a little bit of this song. You can of course listen to the full mix, the final mix, the final version in this card up here, there, somewhere. Is that it? It's there. My, my video is mirrored, it's right there. Anyway, or you can listen to it in the link in the description. Let's check it out. It makes me sick. And there you have it, song from the brief to the final version. By the way, the whole process took me just like a couple days. I'm pretty quick about it. If you like what you saw and you want to work together on something, book an intro call with me at keenansalazar.com. That's my website. Link to it is going to be on the screen. You can type it or in the link in the description. Or the other way is you can, of course, email me at my email, key at keenansalazar.com. It's going to be on screen. K-E-Y at keenansalazar.com. That's what my friends call me. They call me Key. And I hope that we can talk on any one of those channels together and work on some stuff. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Video. Peace. Peace, Gengi. <laughs>